This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to work through the Excel Expert 3.6 Objective Practice Tasks for the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open up the 3.6 workbook. Once that's open, we need to define some names. And so we're going to do it for cell B4 here, for cell B5, and for cell B6. So what they've directed us to do is for cell B4 is to call this the C rate cell. Okay, so right now here's our current name for this cell is just B4. When I click in this, I'm now going to type in C, and this is tough to see in the textbook, but there's an underscore there, and then rate. Enter, and that locks that in. Next, in our term cell, I'm going to highlight B5, and then we're going to call that C term. Finally, for cell B6, we're going to type in C underscore amount. Now, why would we do this? Well, a couple reasons. First off, I'm just going to go a little bit ahead here and select one of the cells in this array here. So in this formula, you can see it's referring to cell B4, cell B5, and cell B6. But we don't necessarily know what those numbers mean or, or what they represent. So when I just look at this formula, it can be a little confusing. Now, the second thing they've done is you'll notice the dollar sign in front of the B and in front of the OR, of before, in front of the 4. So they've made these absolute references. So absolute references are valuable in that when I change or copy a formula into a different cell, it's still going to stay put looking at cell B4. Now, if those dollar signs weren't there, if I copied this formula from here over to another part of the workbook, it's going to use a, a relative reference. So in this case, B4 is one, two, three, three cells over, three columns over. If I was to paste this over here, it would still look three cells over. By naming a cell or a range, gives us two benefits. One is it makes a formula that references it much easier to understand. Second, it defaults to being an absolute reference so that we don't have to worry about making sure the numbers or the dollar signs are in place to make it an absolute formula. So now with that task done, they would like us to edit the formulas in this range to reflect the new names. So this is a little bit tedious. You wouldn't normally need to do that. Um, if you had had named these in the first place, you wouldn't have to make these changes. So, but let's do that here. So I've started here in cell E4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this portion of the formula, B4, with my C rate. So I'm going to go C underscore. My autocomplete here has C rate. So I'm just going to under, uh, down arrow and then tab to integrate C rate. Next, I need to replace B5. And B5 is the term. So that's going to be C underscore T for term. Tab to integrate. Last, I'm going to replace the B6, which is the amount. So that'll be C underscore A for amount. Tab to integrate and hit enter. So if when I look in this next row, you'll see those old numbers references are there, the A1 type references in the row above. Now I can say, okay, so this is referring the rate. It's dividing that rate by 12 to get a monthly rate. Uh, it's multiplying the term by 12, and it's then it's using the amount for the last term in this function. Now we want to do it for all the cells in this range. So next I'm going to work in the interest section. I'm going to change B4 to rate. D4 is a relative reference. We're not going to change that. B5, we're going to change to term. B6, we're going to change to amount. All right, so now we can compare what's in row 5 versus what's in row 4. We can see all of our named cells have been integrated. Last is column G. So that is C rate is the first one. B5, we're going to replace by C term, and B6 by C amount. 
All right, so now all of those cells have been updated for me. Uh, and in order to update the rest of them, our shortcut here is I'm going to highlight those three cells that we've changed. I'm going to double click the bottom right hand corner here. And when I do, that automatically fills down the value in these cells or the formulas in these cells down through the rest and automatically stops in the last row that has data. So just to double check, I can click the bottom row here, row 39, and sure enough, there is our newly named cells integrated into all of these formulas. So I'm going to control up arrow to get right back up to the top. And that wraps up second task. Third task is they've asked us to now change these names uh, to something new. So in order to do that, we're going to go on our formulas tab. We're going to go into our name manager. And once we're in here, we can see all of the names that we've created. Okay, so the amount one we're going to rename. So we'll click edit. And we're going to change this to amount. We'll click OK. Now you'll notice in this list, amount is there. C underscore amount is not. With rate, we'll edit that and just call it rate. Last one that's left is C underscore term. We'll change that just to term. Click OK here. And now you'll see those three names are all in place here. We can close this off. When I click on the cell, sure enough, it shows rate. This one shows term. This one shows amount. And when I check the formulas, they're all referring to the new name and no longer to the old one. That wraps up that third task. Lastly, is there is a, a so we've named individual cells. We can actually name a range. So I could rename all of these cells and, and give them an, uh, a new name. Now, when we name a cell, it can't start with a number uh, or a variety of symbols, and there can't be any spaces. So a lot of times you'll see underscores used to break up uh, words. Um, so yeah, so now if I wanted to, I can select all of our previously used names here. So there's new name, the one I just created. And sure enough, there's that, that range that I had just highlighted and named. Now, there's no benefit for me to do that. I just did it as an example um, to show that it can be done. So we can name cells. We can name ranges. We can also name tables. So with our last step here, we have a table here on the parts page. And when I click in this table, if I go into the table tools design, I can see that this table has a name, but it's it's a generic name of table one, which which frankly doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So what we can do is rename this table, and we're going to do it the same way by going into our formulas, selecting name manager, and there's our table. We'll edit it, and we'll change its name from table one to parts. So now that has been renamed. We can hit close. So now in my name box here, I can go. So there's a mount takes me there. If I want to go back to that table, I can just go. There's parts. Select that. And now it takes me to that parts table. That wraps up all the tasks for section 3.6 of the Excel expert exam. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you'll be kept up to date when we get new releases for the remainder of the videos in this series. I appreciate your time from watching. And hopefully we'll see you with the next video. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.